My friend, we are in uh, Hilton in Doha, the day after an amazing final uh, won by Argentina. Say hello to one of the iconic commentators in South America in USA. Uh, say hello to Anders uh, uh, Cantor, uh, who have a secret and an unbelievable roots about in Romania. Yes, hello. T t how are you? Fine. Tell me a few words in Romanian, please. Cheer my friends. Bine, tell, yeah. tell me what is your story about Romania. My mother was born in Bucharest. Uh, she left Romania when she was uh, 13 years old to Argentina. That's where she met my father, whose parents from, were from Poland. So I have uh, Eastern European blood in, in my family. And uh, I grew up with my grandmother and my mother speaking in Romanian. Um, you know, and as a teenager, I understood 80% of what they were saying. They cooked Mikitei, they did all the Romanian meals. And uh, of course, you know, after so many years, I, I lost the, the, the music of, of Romanian language, but obviously, I, I still understand a little, a little, a little. Why your mother left from Romania in the pages? Um, she was, you know, fleeing the, the bombs and the, Holocaust. Um, you know, we are uh, Jewish and it was uh, very tough for, for everyone in, in that moment. And, uh, you know, my grandparents always talked uh, wonders about Bucharest and how it was a Paris of, of Europe, the second Paris of Europe. But they had very, very fond memories and uh, always told me that I should go and, and visit, which I did. Um, a couple of times, uh, it was under Ceausescu's rule. It was in the winter, in, in February or I don't know what year it was. Um, so it was obviously a different Romania, a different Bucharest than my mother grew up in. But uh, you know, she has the fondest memories. I suppose uh, your mother left from Romania with, uh, with her parents, yeah, probably. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And your paternal uh, grandparents are from Poland yeah, uh, and, and they, they left from the Nazi occupation yes, yeah? yeah, exactly. They left uh, pretty much at the same time. I think my, par my parental grandfathers left a little bit earlier. Uh, they ended up in Argentina, like so many others who ended up in, in other parts of, of the world. And uh, my father was born in Argentina of both Polish parents. Uh, when you was left time in Romania? It was uh, around 35 years ago. Um, like I said, it was uh, February of 1981, I think. It was very, very cold. Uh, I remember snow up to here. Uh, I went to, to see where my mother grew up. The house was there. Um, you know, you know the area of Bucharest. Uh, the they, uh, my mother, there was a, a cousin of my mother that lived in that area at that time. When I went, and she took me to to all the places my mother played in and visited, uh, all the places where my mother was. You miss Romania in your soul. You you like to to come again in Romania in the future, maybe? Of course. Uh, I took my father to Poland to his, uh, the birthplace of his parents, which is a city called Bialystok. Um, and unfortunately, I couldn't go with my mother to Romania. I went alone, but you know, look how, how prehistoric it was. And there was no cellular telephone. I had to buy a postcard, write a, a card, put the stamp, and send it to, to Los Angeles, where she lived with his mom and Lucas. Uh, but of course, uh, you know, I'm very lucky that I travel the world, and hopefully I will get back to, to Romania very soon. You used to to follow what is happening in Romania sometimes. Of course, you know, being having a Romanian mother who still lives and is very preoccupied with three countries. What happens in the U.S.? Your mother is still alive. Yes. yes. Uh, and where, she, where, she where was she here. Is? She was here in the World Cup for oh, the first uh, three years three games of Argentina. She lives in Los Angeles, uh, so she's preoccupied of uh, what happens in the US, what happens in Argentina, and what happens in Romania. So yes, I try to, to follow as much, even though obviously I'm not you know, constantly following Romanian news. 
I don't usually I I try to follow as much as I can. And what's it's your opinion what's uh, what's happening in Romania in general about the social life, about the what means Romania in our time? Well obviously from when I visited there has been a, a cultural change and a new Romania. Every country is struggling, obviously. It's, it's not easy anywhere in the world, not even in the US uh, nowadays. So, uh, okay, uh, one day we will all be prosper and live in, in prosperity. And I, I don't mean abundance, I just mean that the people that work so hard uh, can live in, in prosperous lives. You have a daughter and a son, they are both here to you in the uh, in World Cup in uh, Doha. They know some uh, some work in Romania and you try to, to speak with, uh, with him or, or, uh, or, your, or your mother to, to speak with them? My son is very good in languages, he speaks I think four languages kind of fluently. Uh, my daughter is very good as well, but probably my son knows a little, some words in, in Romanian. Uh, probably my, my mom. Uh, you know, tells you some words when, when they see each other. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's great to have that. <laughs> Let's talk about World Cup, an amazing final, a historical final. You are commentator, I see your, your commentator uh, fantastic. What's your opinion? The greatest final in all time. Do you agree? Yeah, I, I agree because it was great until the 75 minutes for Argentina, it was the most dominant final I ever saw out of the 12 that I've seen in, pers in person. i never seen a team more dominant over the other in the final. Um, and Argentina again, like against the Netherlands, could not put the game away. And in two minutes, they almost lost the final because that saved by Emiliano Martinez on Colo. It was absolutely incredible. And then the agony of the, of the penalties, obviously from the minute Mbappé scored the 1-2 to the end of the penalties, it was definitely the, the greatest time in the world. Are you afraid in that moment that Argentina could lose yes. dra dramatically? <laughs> uh, it, it would have been really... They have an history to lose dramatically. Eh? Uh, but also to win. To we, win. We, we, don't win, we don't win without suffering. Yeah. Uh, you know, against the Netherlands, uh, the game was controlled. Against France, the game was controlled, and it seems that Argentina cannot win a game in peace, you know, uh, without suffering until the very last minute. And it's it the DNA of the people, yeah. It's the <laughs> DNA of the people, it's the DNA of football, and uh, it would have been so unfair for Messi if he had a great World Cup, and if he would not have won this World Cup, he would have been haunted by the memory of this loss, because, again, I think we all agree. You need to be an expert to agree. Every fan agrees. Uh, you can dominate the game until the one two until the final. Do you think after uh, after this final we uh, have the final answer about the great question: Who is the goat, Diego Lionel? No, or is not fair to make this it's comparison? Not, it's, not, it's not fair because uh, he will play with this player. Uh, you know how you know difficult football was. In Maradona's age, he played in muddy fields, he played in the uh, team from here on down. Uh, it was a different football, it was not even red cards, very little red cards, no, uh, no VAR of course, uh, the fields were not as good, the pitches were not as good as, as they are today. It wasn't as fast as it, as it is today, but you can't compare. I say that Pelé was the greatest in his time. Diego was the greatest in his time, and Messi is the greatest now, and all three, plus Cristiano, and you know, Mbappé very soon, are going to be in the Olympus. Of what was your first World Cup as commentator? 1986, I covered the World Cup in Mexico for the Grafico magazine as a written journalist, and then 1990 was my first World Cup on television. Is it true that you was on the stadium to that fantastic goal of Maradona, yeah, the goal of the century? Yeah. Unbelievable, yeah. yeah. It was uh, one of my fondest memories. Um, and I don't want to compare emotions, but the emotion of that day, 
it was incredible because of everything that you know had happened with Argentina and the whole Flamengo and Malvinas war. But what happened against France and the Belgian Cup is uh, right up there. The happiness and the joy is, is really good. Some memories about Romania in the World Cup 90, but especially in 94. I don't have a good one uh, from 94 in the Rose Bowl. Yeah, against Romania, against yeah. Argentina. Yeah. One, Zika, of the, Zika, one of the, Zika, Zika, the Zika. greatest uh, players in the, in the World Cup history. That, that was an amazing, amazing goal. Zika Haji was you know, one of the best players in the world. Uh, so I don't have the fondest memory, but then Argentina without Maradona was another team after he had expelled from the World Cup. But yeah, I remember that game because I, I caught that game. You suffered. I suffered. Uh, I suffered. But you are very expensive, you really suffered. You really liked the game, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I gave in to it emotionally and let my emotions uh, flow in my commentary. In Romania, all the people with this, this impression, uh, even today, that Romania would win that World Cup if they they uh, they have the uh, the lucky moment against uh, Sweden to, yeah. to, to, to penalty kick. Well, that is uh, what the, how ferocious, how brutal the World Cup is. It's decided by little details. France should have been champions. Here. Guillermo Martinez doesn't save with his leg that, that Polo uh, run. That was a winning goal. I mean, that's the difference between uh, having a World Cup in France and, and Argentina. In that case, in that game, the same thing. What do you know about the national team of Romania in our ages? Well, I, I didn't watch really too much of it. Uh, unfortunately, I, I didn't see it many, many of the games. Um, but hopefully you know, we will make it to the Euros uh, again and we'll watch them, watch the Euros next time. They keep expanding the Euros, uh, we'll see how that is. Romania will play in the next qualification against uh, Switzerland in the qualification for Euro. For, for sure you, you see some, some games of the Switzerland here, a very strong team. What's your impression about, about this? Well, it's uh, every game is different, every tournament is different. Uh, I was really surprised for the lab with Switzerland against uh, against Portugal. I think they left everything they had against uh, against Serbia. It was you know a different match for them and for the Serbs as well. And they didn't show up against Portugal, so you can't compare what they did here and what they will do next because now it comes you know, the before and after the World Cup many of the Swedish play, uh, Swiss, Swiss players might not be there I don't know, Shekini will still play uh, we will see a lot Sonner probably Jan Sonner will play uh, you know, they, they have some players that uh, might not be playing again even though it's almost around the corner but you know, we have to wait and see how everyone recovers from this uh, World Cup Famous, especially for your goal mm -hmm. at every game. What is the story of this goal? No, it's a way. Uh, if, if you know, if, if you look up uh, how we call the games in Spanish and Latin America, it's the same thing. I guess uh, I was very lucky to, to be in the right place at the right time in 1994, where my career exploded because of the way I call the games. I call the goals the same way since the very first match I did on television in 1987. Are you prepared to scream a goal to the next World Cup to match of Romania? Hopefully. Well, they, they should make it with 48 teams. They, they, Romania should be there. Final, let's finish the, our conversation very interesting with a few words in Romania. And, and, the, and the message for Romanian people who know you and who know from this moment your special roots with me. So first of all, thank you very much for the interview, for giving me the chance to talk to the Romanian people. That's a piece of course. Thank you very much. We are waiting for you in Romania. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.